Good morning, and it is a good morning, you know. So I found out last night that my son, who had been, um, went for surgery, uh, clean bill of health, the biopsy came back as nothing, and uh, it's just a really happy and relieving situation, because, I mean... I don't know, you know, I think your children are your most valued legacy in life, and my kids mean the world to me. They really, really do. So, I'm going to make myself a cup of coffee, and then I want to talk to you something on the spiritual level. I'll be right back. So while I wait for my coffee, I do have my juice in my beach cup. I picked two cups out um, when I went up north last September, and I bought my friend one and myself one, and unfortunately hers broke, but she still kept it, broken pieces and all. And I told her I'd give her this one if she wanted it. And I bought two different ones this last time I went up because that was from a time before this cup <laughs> was from when oh, I had finally gotten to get away for one day I had hired someone um, when I lived back up in um, Maine I had hired someone to take care of Dennis so that my friend and I could go to Sand Beach at um, Bar Harbor I love Bar Harbor. It's not as great as it was when Dennis and I first got married. What was that? Almost 37 years ago? Wow. Time flies by, doesn't it? Whether you're having fun or not. But that's not what I want to talk about. I always do this. Okay, what I want to talk about was this. Back in the 80s, homeschooling was really looked down upon. And officials could be extremely aggressive toward families that were homeschooling. So I had gotten an interest. Um, I can't remember how. It might have been a radio program where, um, or, or something else. And I heard this radio program and I was really not happy with the public schools. What was going on with my then kindergartner, Rachel? was just insane and um and this was within the public school system well first it was the private school system which we paid for and uh, that did not go well and then we put her into public school and that did not go well and I don't know I just felt like it wasn't the place I don't want to be insulting to those who have chosen public school. As a matter of fact, my grandson goes to public school now. And um, I don't think they're going to go much further than third grade. They're taking it one year at a time. And he'll be a full-fledged kindergartner this year. I just felt that the... Uh, what is the word I'm looking for? The atmosphere, the thinking, even the other kids' thoughts and ideologies were not in sync with what I wanted my girl to know and to think about. So when I heard this radio program, and we were home and office cleaners, me and Den, at first, I'd started the business and he joined me because he was the ladder climber and we could do windows together. So, I contacted the radio station and I said, hey, I, I heard that program and, and the DJ and I, we talked a while and I told him what was going on in the school and he's like, in kindergarten? And I'm like, yeah, and I'm not going to expound on what was happening. And I said, I just, I'd like to know more about this. Is there any way, is there a contact number? And so he gave me the woman's number who had been on the radio program talking about homeschooling. It was local, right? Oh, there's my coffee. One minute. 
I used to let my cowboy coffee like brew for four minutes. I don't do that anymore. As soon as I hear it bubbling on the boil, I just gotta pour it into my cup. And is it ever hot? Mercy. All right, so to continue my story, and believe me, this is a good one, bear with me. So um, I called the woman that very day and I told her I heard her, and I told her what was going on uh, in kindergarten at my daughter's public school, and um, she said, why don't you come over for coffee and we'll talk. So I don't remember if it was that day or the next day, one of these, those days following, I went over to visit her. She had a lot of kids, a lot more than me. I only had two at the time. And... Uh, bless her heart. We talked quite a bit and I told her about my concerns about the authorities because they were very aggressive back then. As a matter of fact, I'll never forget the story of a man in Ohio who was homeschooling his kids and the authorities didn't like that. And they had, I guess, asked him to come in to the police station or what have you. I mean, they made a big to-do about nothing. And the man turned his back on the police and walked away, and they shot him. They killed him. And so it was at that time that I was really concerned, you know? I'm like, is this going to be worth it? I asked myself that about YouTube lately, too. Well, I, you know, we talked and, you know... The area that I was in um, was a bit hostile. And she said that there was a great deal of power in prayer. She said her church had gotten together. There was a principal in the local school. He was extremely aggressive against homeschooling parents, and particularly against Christian homeschool parents. So the church got together and they all prayed, please God, remove this situation from us so we can freely teach our own children. And it wasn't very long after that that this principal died. I know, you're thinking, oh, God's not mean. No, God's not mean, but I think God is just. He has a justice that this world does not emulate. <laughs> Let's face it. I was just talking to another YouTuber who's had a lot of trouble because she has a successful channel. And the, the things that have gone on in her life because of her YouTube channel and YouTube stalkers and... Um, Oh, what was I going to say? <laughs> I always go blank. It's awful. I have to get back to that train of thought. Well, it just makes you wonder if it's worth it. But she seems to feel that it is. But, oh, I remember what I wanted to say. Despite her efforts for justice, she got none. And the horrible things that so-called channel creators were doing to her. I didn't even know it was legal and that there was no recourse at all. There is recourse with God. I do believe that. And I've been bitter and angry toward God, very bitter and angry, so much so that I just don't want to believe in a God, period. But lately, there's been that little, you know, prying on you in my soul that I need to reevaluate what I'm thinking, what I'm doing, who I trust, what I trust, what I believe in, what I don't believe in. You know, I'm stubborn. I'm stubborn. When I feel that something's right, 
I'm not going to back down. No. So I remembered what this woman said, and I did go on the homeschooling journey after that. And uh, it wasn't easy because I was still helping my husband in the business, and he tried doing it alone, and there were jobs he just couldn't do alone. So the kids would go to my mother's on those days, and they'd play, and I was doing homeschooling all wrong. I was trying to do it like the schools, and that's a whole nother story. I'll do a video on that. I've been told by all of these YouTube videos that try to help you get a better channel and, and more views, etc., more subscribers, and they say just keep making videos, make lots of videos, try to make one a day for 100 days, one of them was saying, but I think I've made more than that. But I'm just going to plow through and just keep finding stories in the back of my mind and keep telling them. So I remembered what that homeschool woman had told me. Now, my husband, we had gone from cleaning windows and offices to, um, he just kind of stumbled into the antique world uh, via big trash days. That was our first experience, and I've talked about that before. Before the transfer station, people put all their stuff right out on the side of the road, and you would not believe what we could find out there. It was a treasure trove of stuff. We didn't understand what it was. That was the problem. Not for a while would we understand till one day I stumbled into an auction and there was all our yard sale stuff going for 100%, you know, 20 times what we sold it for. Boy, that was an eye-opener. And sometimes Dennis still didn't learn. So Dennis got into the antique business and he would do yard sales and estate sales and just, you know, from Wednesday all the way through to Sunday, he was out there finding stuff. The secret and the trick was to get there before anyone else did, and so he would door knock. Come to find there was another competitor. He had been there first, and he had had all to himself because he was an early knocker. Well, when he discovered Dennis was out there, he became extremely aggressive. He did some really crappy stuff. One of the things he would do is when Dennis would pick anything up at like a big church sale, he would try to grab it out of Dennis's hand. Literally broke a cranberry glass tumbler right in my husband's hand. He didn't get hurt, but the piece was ruined and um, Dennis was starting to get really disgusted with this guy. So I remembered, there were a lot of incidences with this guy. The, the worst being that as soon as this guy saw Dennis early door knock at someone's door, he'd jump out of his truck, come running up and say, I'm with him. And people, big red flag, two guys, one coming in after the other, they kick them both out. The other thing he did was I was talking to Dennis about, I said, hey, that's a really nice weather vane up on that barn. I wonder if the guy would be willing to sell it. Well, that little you-know-what, he was right there listening. And uh, the day of the sale, he grabbed the ladder in the rain, put it up against the barn, and started to climb the ladder. To get the weather vane. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm laughing. It's just not nice to laugh about what happened next. My husband was looking at Julian and said, Keith, wait a minute and I'll hold the ladder for you. After all that, I said his name, after all that guy did to my husband, he saw the danger and he said, just give me a minute and I'll hold the ladder for you. Well, old Keith didn't listen, and he went up that ladder, and the damn thing fell. <sighs> Dennis said, I wasn't there, and I'm really glad I wasn't. He says, Dennis says to me, Nikki, he said, I've never seen anything like it. 
He says, I don't know if the guy was in shock or what. But he gets up and he said, and I want to throw up at the thought of it, his foot was like, <sighs> he said it was like it had no bones in it at all. It just was like <laughs> flopping all over the place like a cat that's been hit in, in the middle of the road. Ugh. Nasty. Put him out of commission for two years. I don't know, okay? I don't know. Was this a bizarre coincidence? Did God answer the prayer? Please remove Keith out of my husband's way. I didn't mean like, you know, that long, but... The universe, God, is where real justice is at. And so, sometimes I think we've got to come up against Goliath with God, you know? I always revert back to my Bible stories because that's what I grew up on and that's what I believe for most of my life. And David and Goliath comes to mind. Little tiny David who couldn't even wear the armor because he was so small. And he says, who's letting this little puke come up against us and insult our God? And his brothers were like, go away, David. Go tend the sheep. The little shepherd boy, right? He wasn't afraid. He took his little slingshot and a rock and he walked right up to what appeared to be a giant. And he flung that rock and hit that big bully smack dab in the middle of the forehead and down he went. I like stories like that. <laughs> Anyhow, and how about Samson when he took the jawbone of a donkey and he, like, took out a thousand guys? Dang. Do I believe it literally? Yeah, I do. Look, it's like this. If God's for us, who can be against us? So, for those who choose to stand against me in this world... I'm going to pray. Yep. I'm going to pray. I'm going to say, God, this is a thorn in my side. And if you so choose to do so, I want you to remove that thorn. And I want all of you who stand with me to pray that prayer too. There's a thorn in my side and I'm asking God to remove it. And not just for me but for all the Davids in this world that aren't afraid to stand up to Goliath and aren't afraid to press on. I'm going to press on. It's not always easy. You know, being human like we are, we tend to want to let it go, ignore it, don't let it bother you, but injustice in this world severely bothers me, injustice in general, it doesn't matter if it's done to me or someone I don't know or someone I do know or people on the other side of the world, injustice bothers me, I write a lot of letters, I love to write letters to my congressman, <laughs> the representative, the... at least I'm getting it out. And you never know when someone just might hear you. And it might change their mind. So, yeah, write letters if you're upset about something. And pray if it's beyond the powers that be. Go to the power that's he. You know what I'm saying? Or her. I, I know everybody believes differently. And I'm not going to cut down anybody for their spiritual belief. I understand 
it's a hard row to hoe. And um, you just got to keep digging, keep going. There's really no other alternative. I mean, you can't just stop, right? Dead and do nothing. You got to just keep pressing on. So let's see. I've done 20 minutes. I think I've covered good subject. And I think I'm going to end my video here. I have much to do. I have babysitting this morning because Maggie's um, washer um, situation still isn't set up. So she has to go to the laundromats. And uh, awful hard to bring a fin to the laundromat anything could go wrong so it's better that he's here with me and I've got boxes and stuff everywhere mercy I'll leave my right off wipe off board right on wipe off board there because he likes to mess around with that I don't know what I'll do with everything else Ugh. boy some things are harder to deal with than others and this situation of what do I do with all this stuff well I did find um, storage I wanted one particular one, but they're stacked full. They had a really good, um, you know, promo for price. Filled it right up, 100%. Doesn't look like one's coming through for me at all. Because I said, please. I said, I don't care what comes up. Just call me and I'll take it immediately. But he doesn't. So now i got to go to this other one. I don't like their policies so well, but I'm going to do it anyway. Oh, right. Oh, and I keep forgetting to say please subscribe at the beginning. That's when you're supposed to say it because most people are gone within a few minutes. Crazy, right? But, um, yeah, please subscribe. Uh, please like. And what's the other thing? I've been thinking a lot about you, Annie. Javelina Flips. How's it going? I just... I pray for you, I think about you, and I hope all our viewers that stay with me and that to the end of the video, um, please pray for Annie. I know her husband's not doing well. I haven't had an update, and I just, I just care about her. I do. I know what it's like to have the love of your life get sick. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Be brave and be bold and never back down. Never give up and never give in. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Bye.